Hello, everyone. I haven't seen you in a while. It's Wednesday. Welcome back to the Abomination Vault. For those of you who are new to our show, welcome. It's good to have you. Uh, for everyone else, welcome back. I'm your GM for the night, DM Steve, and I'm joined by fellow D&D veterans Mike, Rick, Richard, and Nina as we attempt to crit fumble our way through learning Pathfinder. Say hello, everyone. Hello, hello everyone. Hello! Just as good Whoa. the second time around. I've got the strangest deja vu. <laughs> I right? So anyways, a, a big Did shout out to all of our fans dealing with our uh, our little bits of technical screw-ups on our stream. But uh, those of you who are alive to help us catch these things, thank you. We appreciate the interaction. It's what drives us. It's what makes us happy. Um, so keep it up. Comment on YouTube. Comment on Twitch. Just tell us how much you like the show so that we can sleep at night because we're we crave your adoration it's true yep uh we also have the community goal um on our stream for the heroic coins watching on twitch allows you to earn we uh, are trying to get ten thousand points donated to do a battle royale one shot with all of our characters uh last i checked we are at 21 percent of the way there so keep that donation going um and also uh, this week, we added four new rewards, courtesy of Rick's suggestion, which is plot armor. So this one's a little pricier, because you guys are, like, flowing with coins. Uh, but you can give the hero of your choice a plus one status bonus to their armor class for the entire session for 5,000 coins. Not a bad deal. So everyone give it to, you know, Mukta, who never gets attacked. Mm-hmm. And uh, don't give it to Nulara, right? Definitely. Of course not. Uh, a big call out to our latest Prime subscribers. Um, in this last week, we had uh, Cheese of Justice, and it was a brand new sub, and phenomenally CJ. You were our first resub we've ever had. You get thank the crown for the rest of time. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much, CJ. And, you know, uh, Shenrai, who just followed right now, thank you for tuning in with us for the first time. Uh, it's really good to have you here. Um, those of you who are watching this maybe later, or even if you're watching right now, make sure to you know head over to twitch.tv slash dmsteve and give us your subscription if you're enjoying the content. You know, you have a prime sub you can give for free. We really would appreciate it if you want to just kick some cash our way and pay it out of pocket. We won't complain. Um, and let's not forget, really important... Our new emote is live right now. Let's go. It features new Lara holding her trident with the words crit written across the top. If you all remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you remember, then um, any the first two times new Lara ever used the trident, it was crit. So now it's just a running joke, even though, as she pointed out, she's yet to crit since then. I've with yet it. to hit a natural 20 since. Natural 20, that's right. But We're, I have been critting. That's true. That's a big distinction, right? Yes. Still can get crits without natural 20s in Pathfinder, which is intriguing. So make sure in, in chat tonight, whenever you guys, whenever anyone in our crew crits, spam emote in chat so we can get the, the, the emotes flowing and uh, so show new Lara our love. It looks cool, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so cute. Yep, there's Nina spamming it right now in chat. That's pretty awesome. Very cool. And uh, as we get more subs, we can unlock more emote slots, and we can get more of our characters into the uh, the mix. So keep them coming. Cool. All right, moving on. Oh, I got to put on my broadcast announcer's voice. Hang on. <laughs> this rules clarification of the week is brought to you by David Sims. In this case, he clarified how seek, the action seek, works in combat. So last week, I ruled it was a 10-foot square in a search action that you had to pick. And there was a moment where Nulara didn't know where the thing was. Rolled D D4 to randomly choose which 10 feet to search, right? Um, turns out that's not exactly right. Um, the rules say, like, if there's even a restriction on the space, it's up to the DM anyways. But even if the DM rules that there is a need for a specific space that's being searched, you have two choices as a PC. You can do a 15 foot burst, which means anywhere within 15 feet of you, or a 30 foot cone like down a hallway or something. 
So it's much, much less restrictive than I ruled it last week. So that's a ruling that's going to go in the future in the player's favor. Thanks, David Sims. I'd give you here a point, but I will when I can. A viewer point. Yeah, virtual hero point. Exactly. So keep that in mind and call me out on the future in case you guys fight more invisible stuff. Uh, one other last thing to re remember. Um, last week, Dalvin, uh, he gifted one... What is it? It's one hero point per character. He donated four hero points for all four characters. So hey, thank you, you, Dalvin. Let's go. Yes. Make sure you, he feels your appreciation. So all of you are going to start tonight's session with two hero points instead of the standard one. Which Dalvin's giving us a good head start. Exactly. And to remind you, in case you've forgotten for some reason or you're new to the Pathfinder, uh, hero point allows one re-roll on any action that you do, any roll. So... Uh, you, you roll, you see the result, and then you say, no, I want to re-roll that. Or it can bring you back from the brink of death as well. All right, I think that covers most of the behind-the-scenes prep work I needed to do for tonight. Um, I think it's time to head back into the Abomination Vault. Players, are you ready? Nope. Let's go! No? Okay. I want to kill some college? ghouls! <laughs> we got this. All right. <laughs> So let's go ahead and jump into tonight's episode, which is episode 16 of The Abomination Vaults. We'll see you in a moment. The lumber town of Otari, with its storied past and a fair share of sinister secrets, has been fairly quiet in recent decades. Over the 400 years since its inception, the surrounding area has been the launching pad for many famous adventurers, and as a result, most of the ancient ruins have been fully explored, much of their mysteries already solved. But when the mysterious gauntlet, an eerie landlocked lighthouse, begins to glow with a baleful light, the people of Otari suspect it's an ominous prelude to sinister events. The call goes out for a new band of heroes to save the day. Those heroes are Mukta. One's path in life may shift like the sands. You have to adapt or be buried. Halarmony Higgins. Can I play something for you? New Lara. Hey, I know that it's scary. But you have to get up, okay? Take my hand. Ugh. Very good. Let's go. Clovis. Nature is not to be put in order. Nature is order. It is for us to put ourselves in unison with this order. The time has come to enter the Abomination Vault, Ruins of Gauntlet. back so i'm nervous the camera <laughs> fades in from a bright blue light hurting your eyes and as the light dims into a more manageable vision we see a circular chamber with a beam of blue energy flowing from the floor to the ceiling bending the stone where it connects as the camera then floats down a darkened chamber we see dead ghouls littering the floor, with the walls stacked floor to ceiling with shelves of books. We hear hissing and banging on a door as the camera focuses in on the face of a large ghoul wearing blue robes. We can hear its voice seething with rage. These intruders kill your brothers and sisters, and now... They defile your queen's sanctuary. Let us welcome their flesh into the canker. For our queen! We hear cheers echoing from the ghouls around as they begin to chant in unison, For the canker. For the canker. For the canker. As the camera turns to show a closed door, 
the camera like that. <laughs> the camera immediately pushes in through the door, then through a second door. In that into a darkened room. In that room, we see Nulara tightening her shield and getting her trident ready. Palarmony is still talking, trying his best to talk down the enemies unsuccessfully. The camera floats back towards a second room, glowing from an ever-burning torch sitting on a table. A small study filled with books and comfortable chairs comes into view. We see Clovis and Mushi turning their attention towards the chanting, which is growing louder and louder, even through the doors. And we see Mukta casually sliding down to hide behind the large, overstuffed chair. The camera finishes its sweep of the room, points back towards the dark room with Nulara and Halarmony, the chanting growing louder as the cult seems to be whipping itself into a frenzy. The heroes are stuck here, the only exit down deeper into the dungeon, with a group of angry ghouls between them and safety. The look of panic on Nulara's face says it all. And we actually rolled initiative last time already, guys. So pretty good, guys. Pretty good initiative. Not too bad of a little situation you guys got yourself into. So as we have been doing for the past couple of weeks, we start our session with combat. All I right. Need to yep, it'll be good. Good call on that. Okay, so you can go ahead and put yourselves like you know you guys had a little bit of prep time, so. Feel free to position yourselves where you want to be. I'm here at the door. Yeah. Hal immediately darts back into the room. Okay. Um, so, first. So I'd thrown the other ever burning torch into that room first so that there was okay. light in there. So there's light in both rooms. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I fix that. So I turn the torch back on. Mm hmm. Okay. So first up in the initiative, rolling a 27 using stealth is Mukta. Um, well, let's see. I'm already hidden behind this, uh, dusty old leather so uh, chair. I'm going to hold my action. I'm going to spend two actions to hold an attack action for once that any enemy I see, I'm letting an arrow fly. Perfect. You got the arrow bow out and you're ready to go and waiting for your moment. Okay. New Lara. All right, so uh, with my trident, I am going, actually, I'm going to yell out to everyone at first. I'll let them know. We're going to let, we're going to make them, uh, they're going to, they're going to funnel in. They're going to funnel in. And then I open the door. So the interesting thing is, right, the door to open, you have a trident and a shield. Damn and you it. Like no, but you can kick it, like, bam, if you want to, like, kick it open with an interact action, I'll totally allow yep. it. Oh okay. man. So well, one interact to open ahead. the door it is an interact action, so that's one of your actions. Okay, and then you need two actions to hold an uh to yep. hold. It's right? two actions to hold a single action. They're gonna open this eventually. Okay, I'll <laughs> hold my two actions to attack the first person that gets in here. Got it. So the trident's just at the ready, and then the first yeah, thing that comes I'll in range I'll stand my ground. Yep. Okay. Did she say she wanted funnel cake? It's kind of hard no, to hear. We're going to funnel. We're going to funnel them. All right. Clovis. I'm hungry. I am going to delay. Okay, you're going to delay your turn? Okay, you just let me know when somebody's turn ends and you want to jump in. You say, I'm jumping in. Okay. Delaying the turn. Okay. Hal. Okay. Uh, Hal is going to smile at his friends and he is going to use a one action to do lingering composition on his Inspire Courage because that's what he does. So okay. I'll give I, you my performance check. Yep. I did add as well into your Inspire Courage, I added links to different effects that'll last a different number of rounds automatically. So depending hey. on what you roll, you guys can just drag and drop the correct one to your turn. Well done. So All right, here we go. Issue. 
Very nice. No! Natural one. That's a one. That is no. a critical failure. I'm going to use one of my hero points. <laughs> hero do point! It. Hero point! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Very good. Let's do it. I cannot it. have that music is terrible. Not much better, but much better. It's still, <laughs> uh, it's not a critical failure anymore. Yep. So it's going to last one round. So you guys can in one round. drag the Inspire Courage for one round to your tokens. And better I'm going to one. move uh, down here. Huh? And I will cast Shield, and that's my turn. Okay. All right. This ghoul at the front door, seething with, like, rage and fury, uses an action to open the door, flings it open, and you see, you fought a couple of these ghouls so far, right? So you're you're used to this. The look on their face and the, the actual focus, you can tell there's something washed over these creatures that's giving them a, like, militant focus, like, the other ones did not have. And so this one, I'm gonna nicknamed the over-emotional ghoul. <laughs> yeah. Second action, step into the hallway right in front of you, which will trigger your held action to stab it with mm -hmm. the trident. Yes, sir. And also my arrow. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. So also your arrow. Question. Right, is that con is it considered flat-footed still or no? Um, that's a good question, right? Well, it, it can't see you because you definitely are hidden from it. So it's definitely right. flat-footed. Yeah. All right. 21 will hit. Okay, perfect. So that would be 13, 13 points, points of piercing damage. Oh. Okay, 13 uh... points from that. Yep, Mukta, your arrow looks like it's going to miss. Huh. You got two hero uh... points. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll use one. All right. Wow. Not Mr. much better. Thank, thank you for the follow. Oh my god, 15. That's including Inspire Courage and everything. And then with also new Lara kind of blocking. Nope, sorry. It misses, even with the hero point. Mukta, you are shaking in your boots. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm shooting through a door over Nulara through another door, so it's a little tricky. <laughs> it's true. It's not. It's not entirely your fault. Okay, that was that was your held action and Nulara. So that was the second action. Hits it. It immediately gets bloodied, and as you like stab into it, Nulara, the the trident's like running through, and you're like, like pulling through its like body, like comes oh out God. of the side, and it leans into you and just bites at your neck. Okay. The 21? Uh, hits. Okay. So, it's gonna be, uh, let's see, sorry. Um, oh, actually, that's the wrong damage roll. Ignore that one. No. Okay. Two sounds so, pretty. Five. Five damage. Okay. And I need you to make, you feel as its jaws bite into your neck, I need you to make a two. Fortitude saving throws, as a matter of fact. Uh, first one would be an 18. Okay, first one is a success. You can feel like the burning, like muscle stiffness starting to at, like come on and you like push it away and you're not paralyzed. It's cracked my neck a little bit. Second one. Uh, 19. Perfect, and you <laughs> resist the other effects that are secret, but accidentally got put in chat. Okay, and that's its turn. Um, behind them, oh my god, I'm gonna fucking die. The snooty ghoul comes running into the room, and you actually watch as it's kind of surprisingly agile for what you would expect this creature. And Nulara, it's trying to do a tumble through action through you to get into the room behind you. So it needs to make. Um, it's a. An, Acrobatics check against your reflex DC, I believe. Okay. So Which it would be no eighteen. Okay. So then it, it uses this action to try to tumble through its ally and you, and you just like immediately get your like shield like right against it, pin it against the wall as it's like screaming, trying to push back, and, and then you know it can't. Uh, so that action fails as it tries to get through. Um, it's kind of bottlenecked here. 
Um, I gotta look at tumble through real quick because is it, can they only try it once per turn, or is there like? Let me see. Tumble through. You try it to your speed during this movement. You can what? Uh, your movement ends, and your trigger reactions if you had moved out of the court you started. In. So it actually does trigger an opportunity attack against you. Um. You trigger reactions. Yeah, I'll if you take had it. Moved. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it with this. Is he within my range, though? Well, he's trying to move through you, right? So in this moment where he's trying to pass through you and you stop oh, okay. him, he is in melee range. So shield, and then another one where I tried it. Yeah. So he's technically like. 18? 18 will 18. hit. Nice. Uh, that would be. 13 points of piercing damage. Okay. Again, bloody this ghoul. Um, so I think what he does is you stab him, he stumbles back, and he looks like hurt and angry and. Um, yeah. I think what he does next is he just like looks at you and he can't get in and he's angry, so he attempts to demoralize you. Oh, so my will save? It's gonna be uh, intimidation against your will save. Um, you don't speak under common, right? No. So you can't even understand him. Yeah, so, does he have intimidating glare? He, no, he does not. So he gets a minus okay. four. So you rolled an eight. Plus nice. you have an extra plus one against fear effects, I believe. So in all of this to say, you are unfazed by this thing, Mular. Heck yeah. I crack my right. neck again, and then I smile. Yep, there's a third ghoul that tries to crowd into the hallway, and he's also going to attempt to uh, tumble his way through you, Nular. An 18? Uh, that's my DC, so he succeeds. So he beats it. Yeah, so he goes 5, 10, 15. So one gets past you, Nulara. I'm flat-footed. Um, yeah, so here's the thing, right? He's right behind you, and you are flat-footed against against him. Um, and you feel yourself, right? You're, you got the shield up. You're stabbing one. Another one crawls over the top of you, leaps through the gap. It gets behind you, and you feel like, oh, God, he's going to – they got me surrounded. But um, he turns his head, like, past you, and he is focused into the next room. And he's, like, locked eyes with, like, Mukta, who's, like, behind the bow, like, with the bow behind the thing. So he's going to use a second move action to move away. Now, you've already used your reaction. Yeah. So he comes in here into the room. And uh, it's kind of surprised to see, like, Clovis there, because at this point he had no idea that Clovis <laughs> was even there. Um, but he's already, like, focused in on Mukta, so he closes in to Mukta. You don't have opportunity to attack or anything, right, Clovis? No, I don't think you do. Um, and with his third action, wait, tumble through is only one action, right? I tumble believe through so. Through is a single action, yeah. So he still has one action. So he is going to do a jaw strike against you, Mukta. We Mukta. Sixteen. Mukta definitely dodges out of the way. Very nice. So it's trying its hardest to get in on Mukta, and Mukta is like using the chair as the shield between him. Kind of have cover from the the the, the chair news, but that's its turn. Um, that leaves one last ghoul back here. Your favorite, the audience's favorite, Kinky Ghoul. Oh, he hasn't even gone yet. No, nope, Kinky Ghoul has not. So, so actually, Kinky Ghoul's kind of screwed here. Um, he moves up with one stride action, because that's all he can do. Because um, he can't actually get closer. And then with the second, he's going to do the tumble through. And he is also going to try to tumble through, you know. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be an acrobatics check. He needs to get an 18, gets 16. a 23. Mm -hmm. Crawls right over the top of you, Nulara. Ah. Um, and this one... Um, This one's on a mission. He, he also walks right past you, Nulara, into this back room. Oh, to find Clovis. He looks around and then turns in the door. Like, you see this claw, Clovis? The claw goes in the door and it looks in. And this thing, like, locks eyes with you and just says, Here you are. And, like, bares his teeth and tries to, like, square off against you. But that was three actions for him to get there, so he can't actually do anything. Clovis, would you like to take your turn at this point? You've been holding off your turn. I would be pressed to 
Not so much showing up on my screen. Give me one second. Okay. Yeah, you got really quiet for me too. There is everybody. Everything was happening. I wasn't even seeing anybody. You couldn't see anything? Okay, so refresh work. New. All right. Yep, refresh work. I'll pop my character sheets. This is ghoul, the kinky ghoul. Okay. With You can see he's got some residual acid burn on his face as he stares yep. into your soul. Oh. I get a little scared. I look at Mushi and... Uh, I point to him, and I am going to wild shape. Okay. So explain. This is the first time we've seen Clovis do this. So explain to us what this looks like. Clovis, so what is your? I looked wild at Muka. Look? Oh, sorry. Shape look like? Well, as I go to transform, right? I touch myself and. You see me just do and go. A bear token just came. Okay, so where Clovis now once bear. stood, now stands Bear Clovis. Very so cool. So with that, I'm going to take a jaw strike. I'm going okay. to take our jaw strike at the guy. And... Oh yeah, because wild shapes are two actions, so you still have one action. Perfect. Uh, so 16 is a hit. Let's go. Fourteen points of damage. Yeah. You bite into this thing and uh, like ragdoll its course as you lift it off the ground and start. Well, you're a bear, but you're still a medium-sized bear, right? You're not huge yet, so you're like a baby bear. No, I'm not huge. But you're biting into this thing and just tearing at it, and it's like flesh tears away really easy, like paper mache under your teeth. And yeah, it's really hurt and it's bloody. Ah, that roar. All right. Um. So this this one in the back, right, the one that's been chanting um, and like guiding the rest, goes last in initiative. Um. It steps, it's gonna, let's see. What's the range on this thing? Okay, yeah, so it's one action, it's gonna use one action to step as close as it can without, cause it has nowhere else to go, like here. And then you watch as it begins chanting a spell and it casts a second level harm spell. Or sorry, a two action harm spell. So it starts chanting and, and moving its hands and you watch as this burst of like, negative energy flows in 30 feet all away from it and washes over all the ghouls, washes over you, Nulara, washes over, um, does it say it's blocked by anything? It just says, yeah, so it washes through the walls and everything and just hits everything in 30 feet. So here's the 30 foot, this is the 30 foot cube that gets hit. So. Uh, Nulara and Clovis, can you make fortitude saving throws for me? Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, 20? Okay. Hero point. Yeah, that's a <laughs> critical fail from Clovis. Yep, I am going to use a hero point. Hold that no. away. Ooh. Still a fail. Alright. Okay, so. Uh, this is not a critical fail, though. <laughs> it's not a critical fail. I don't know if that makes a yeah. difference here. I guess it does. It would be double yeah. damage. If double damage. Because it's a basic save. Okay, so here's the thing. Four points of negative energy washes out. And as it passes through the ghouls, each one of them are healed by the energy. Uh, let me delete the template. So each one of these ghouls is healed for four points, including the one that's being bit by the bear. Now, New Lara. You're going to take half the damage, which is four reduced to two. But here's the thing. As this negative energy washes over you, there's a little 
close up as the camera pans into your neck and you're wearing this yes, little I was gonna necklace, say. right? And the necklace yeah. glows and you watch as all the negative energy is like sucked into the amulet. And that gives you resistance five against damage from hard spells, so you take zero damage from this spell. I wink nice. at the ghoul. Huh. Wait, is that the kinky ghoul? Better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, thank you for sticking with us, guys. Okay. Now can you guys hear my voice? Yeah, you should be able to hear my voice again. The setting I fixed last time didn't yeah. stick for some reason. So now you can hear my voice again. Awesome. Thank you, Emmerich. For, Emmerich, I'll watch her for making sure audio works. Watching everything. Watching everything. Okay. It was, Watching it was crazy. all the things. It was crazy, Steve, while you were down. We rolled like 20 natural 20s in a row. That's they're insane. All dead. That's pretty impressive, I gotta say. For sure. They're all dead. I mean, That's... more dead than they already were. Yeah, right? they, they were went back dead. down to whatever plane they were in. Now we're just drinking Wait, it's weird because whiskey. Foundry lost all of your natural 20s in chat. Oh, wonder... no. That's it must have been like a crash. Foundry issue. Yeah. Crash. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I guess you're right. Yeah. Well, I think when we left off, we were just going into the second round of combat, top of the round. Perfect time to crash. And I guess because, you know, just keep it fair, we'll just get rid of all the, the natural 20s you guys rolled and just take it from the top. So, <laughs> for sure. Mukta, it is your for, turn. For, you know, everyone watching the stream's benefit so they can watch the fight again. But, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we already know the end result is what you're saying. Of course, we're heroes. Six natural 20s. All right. All right. Uh, question. Okay, okay, there's square. Never mind. I see there's squares. I'm going to... Uh... Yeah, it's, there are squares that might not be very visible. Let's see. So let's see. How do I want to do this? Um... Doody, doody, doody. There, I made the squares a little more visible. All right, I am going to attempt to tumble through. Okay. Yes, you will. Make that acrobatics check. This thing's reflex, it's a uh, nine, so your target's a 19. You're stronger. 28 yes. no problem nice so how, what does it look like how is, how are you tumbling through this ghoul i hook it with part of my uh short bow put its neck down and literally back to back flip over it oh. yeah legolas style got it yes okay so you go ahead and move you can stride up to your speed with the tumble through i mean i assume i know it's where you're going to Yes, let me make sure. Let me what the, the stream? The game. Uh, acrobatics. Uh, okay. So that wasn't a critical success, but I'm not going very far anyway. So. Yeah, you were one <laughs> off critical success, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, it's all right. I'm not moving my full movement anyway. And uh, with uh, one hand, I will. Uh, pull out my rapier mm -hmm. one yes. quick motion and attack the ghoul in front of me it is flat footed because you are flanking with bear Clovis Clovis that was quite amazing alright bear with me while I kill this guy oh. <laughs> nice. alright flat footed rapier Let's dance. 18 is a hit. Nice. All right. Nice. 14 Very points nice. of damage. So you like while Clovis is here, like biting and tearing it, you find an opening and you go right to where like the heart would be on this thing and pokes right through and it's not beating 
but like it's enough to like while you, what you see Clovis is like a rapier stick through like the like paper mache chest with a little heart like a little black and shriveled up heart just on the end of it because you killed this thing. Nice. Nice. Let's go. Because I'm a bear, but I just grab the heart off of the end of that rapier and I start eating it. Just start eating it. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the body slumps harmlessly to the floor, and Mukta, you still have one action. No, don't eat that. Don't <laughs> put it down. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> Throws What's it on the going ground. on over there? <laughs> what do you have in your mouth? What do you have in your mouth? Uh. <laughs> All right, so there's nothing. This one is not flat-footed against me, though, correct? The this one, one is still... not anymore, yeah. All right. Um, why not? Not like I can do anything else. I'm going to third action attack oh, it. I just realized Kinky Ghoul died the way that he lived between two people. Getting stabbed. Getting stabbed, yeah, that too. Poor Kinky Goal never got his revenge against Clovis. Yep, so let's do this this third attack. This is at a minus four. Yes. Fail. But it's uh, right. yeah. That is a fail, unfortunately. Right, and that, so that, will, that will be my turn. That ends your turn. Uh, Nulara, holding okay. the line here. Holding the door. Heck yeah, I am going to tighten my grip harder around my trident, and then with a power attack, try to finish this ghoul right in front of me. Okay, go for it. Oh, come on. That would be 20 to hit. 20 hits. Perfect. Not a crit. Uh, power attack, so that is 19 points of piercing damage. Okay, so I think this one, you like take this, the tip of the trident, strike it out right into this thing's brain and like pierce it with that thrust and like you watch as like its eyes that go limp and its whole body just like completely like shuts down as it like tumbles to the ground immediately killed with that attack perfect and then for my third action i'm gonna raise my shield okay staring down at this you kill the over emotional ghoul so he's like <gasps> as he dies but then the snooty ghoul is like <sighs> whatever that's it. Uh, that's the end of my turn. Yes. You did a raise shield, right? Did you do the macro? I don't see the, the icon on here. Uh, yeah, I clicked it. There it goes. Oh, clicking it again. Perfect. All right. Um, Hal. All right. Uh, Hal will look around as his music fades, and he will belt out with his loot. Hold the line. Da -na -na. And he will do lingering composition with his inspire courage once again. Let's not crit fail this time. Yep. You got this. Kong right there. He's gonna. He's gonna get a high roll now. Mm -hmm. Yay! It was, yep. it was on it. a one for a second. Yes, it was. That is a critical <laughs> yep, success. Yeah, but it was holding the line. So that means you guys get inspire courage for four rounds this time. Let's go. All right. Go ahead and drag that to your tokens. And, Sounds uh, really good, Hal. Then I will move and cast shield and in my turn. <laughs> Thank you. You are the Inspire Courage bot. Okay, ghoul get their turn. Oh, wow. Whoa. Look at that. Karate Kid has gifted five subs to our viewers. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Karate Kid, a.k.a. Mukta. Let's go, Mukta. <laughs> so kind of you. Dalvin got a sub, Mr. Beatbop, Zangy, Criminal Matrix, and Mr. V. Welcome. Woo! Welcome to the... Oh, God, we need a name for our fans. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Welcome to the Rose Guard. The We're going to kill Guard. these people. Uh, okay, so you guys first. all got your four-round uh, Inspire Courage. The ghouls get, get their turn. So there's only two left. So this one here that's already, like, honed in um, on... Uh, I think he like he it looks and he looks at Mukta and there's like a little rat kind of guy in front of him. And he looks over and there's like this larger bear in the corner, like teeth snarling. And he looks back at the rat and he goes, "Oh yeah!" And then he leans in to bite you, Mukta. So jaw attack to start. Thirteen. Looks like my offering to the dice gods have worked. It misses. 
So as you're like pushing its mouth like off of you, it has like a, a hand kind of free and it's trying to rake you like across your belly. So let's see if its second attack makes a difference. Uh, that's a 23. Even yeah, with a penalty? <laughs> Even with a penalty, yeah, it, it was, uh, he rolled pretty that, high. That 17 one plus. Hits. Okay. So with the claw, like, across your midsection, you do take three points of slashing damage. All right. But I'm going to need you to make two fortitude saving throws. Two of them, all right. First one's against the paralysis. Oh, so you feel as the, well, I mean, you got a hero point, but you do fail the paralysis check. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to use it. I don't like being paralyzed. Okay. Oh, interesting. Only, I guess, only the bite can inflict the second save effect. The claw doesn't. That is good to remind myself. Okay, so it's just one fortitude save. So you want to reroll it with your hero point? I do. Okay, so in that moment, you've... Oh, mm, sorry, that's worse. Nope. No! So as this thing slices like across you, uh, it begins to spread out from your belly outward, and you go rigid, and you are now paralyzed. So I'll add the paralyzed condition to you. And that means yep. you can't do... You can only, like, recall knowledge, and you are flat-footed to everything. Um... You can see everything, but you can't move your body. Okay. And you get a save Damn. at the end of your turn against this effect. Um, but with you now flat-footed, um, I guess it's going to continue to try. You, you, you can't talk, but you can feel it going, like, as it's, like, clawing your skin open, and it, like, leans in with its mouth, and it's, like, mold flesh for the cake as it begins to use its claw to try to flay more flesh off you. It's gonna have a much higher like ch chance of failing at this, but let's see. Um, a 16? Misses. That's your eight, nice. but you're flat-footed, because you're paralyzed. It, my my AC is 20 normally, oh, so now it already it's tech. It already uh, tech on it. Perfect. I, I looked at your thing, it said 18, but I didn't realize it took the flat-footed, because it, I guess paralyzed out of that automatically. That's awesome. So. It, so it's trying its best and it just it, its claw gets stuck on some of the buckles in your armor and it can't quite get free so it's like oh this is this is embarrassing sorry one second and it's like yanking itself out all right back at the front this one the snooty ghoul is like oh, let me show you how it's done and charges in and is going to, to tumble through. huh it's not gonna tumble through it's gonna take you on new Lara, so it has a jaw attack against you. Uh, shield, blocking it with my shield. Okay, it's a 25. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it hits, but like you said, you're blocking with your shield. I also have aggressive block. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's gonna do its damage, so that's... It's only two points of damage. I take none. You take none, your shield absorbs the blow. Boom! Um, I do... This is a weird kind of situation where it hits you... But it doesn't, I think because it doesn't get through your armor of your shield, I'm not going to make you roll the paralyze effect because you're not actually taking damage from it. I think, I think in this case, it doesn't, the effect shouldn't apply because you didn't actually take damage. So aggressive block. So does that you use your reaction? DM, uh, yes, that does okay. use my reaction. So that allows you to either, it, it has a choice, so it can be pushed back or it can be flat footed. Mm hmm. Um, I think it's going to choose to be pushed back out of the hallway. Okay. Uh, so it gets pushed back, and then um, it's looking kind of sheepish and kind of looks back over its shoulder, and it's being, like, commanded to, like, go back in. But uh, it doesn't really... There's not really, like, anything it can do, you know? It's like... It's like, I'm not going back in there, right? I'm not going in there to die. But it has... It does have this righteous fury and vengeance, and it really wants. Mm. All right, because of its, because of the situation, and because you guys are going against its like temple and this like holy place, it charges back in with reckless abandon right at you, Nulara. But that's its third action. 
Very cool. All right. Clovis. All right. So the bear is going to move over here. So the bear's like like stomping on the furniture and the chairs, the table like crashes under your like weight of your feet. But you get in the corner. Into it and so this guy's flat footed now, right? He is flat footed against you, yes. Okay. And I'm gonna take my jaw attack. Okay. That's a natural one. Uh, that is a critical failure. Hero point. That'll be my last hero point. You're using your last hero point. Okay, reroll it. Save Mukta from paralysis feast. Yes. You got this. You got this, Clovis. You see, we used all of our natural 20s off stream. That was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> 24 is a hit. Four. Actually, the thing is, also, this thing is not technically flat footed because Mukta can't threaten it because he's paralyzed. Uh, but it's still it still doesn't a hit. know that. No, yeah. He doesn't damage. know he's paralyzed. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so um, 12 bloodies it as you tear through with your first attack. Yeah, and I'll take a second attack. I'll do a bear claw. Bear claw. Okay, so this will be at the minus four. Yum. Sounds delicious. Yes, Rick. Uh, bear, claw, <laughs> bear claw. Uh, bear claw. Uh, bear claw. I didn't even think. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, oh, they're making me hungry now. I so you made uh, us movement to Yeah, that's my turn. All right. All right. The canker cultist out here. Um, last turn, you used like the magical spell. Um, this one. So this one begins chanting another sort of spell and like making eye contact right with you, Nulara, as it begins like chanting these words that you don't understand but still like swirl around your mind and you can feel your body just feels like it's being flayed like you're wearing full armor you look down but you feel yourself being flayed here so let's do uh let's do a um phantom pain so you need to make a, w a dc20 will save on Barasma. 15 15 is a failure uh, I'm gonna use a hero point. Hero point, okay. Uh huh. Hero point payoff, come on. Nope, did it not. did not. <laughs> okay, so you Thank are. Thank you still, though, Dalvin. Yep, you're gonna take, uh, let's see. Um, so it's, let's see. 2d4 mental damage. So that's five points of mental damage you take as you feel. It's just being pained, like you feel like you're being flayed, right? Um, and then secondly, uh, you are persistently taking 1d4 persistent damage. Mm -hmm. So let me add the persistent. Oh, is it not working? I had a mod for this and I don't, I don't actually see it. Anyway, you have persistent damage at the end of your turn as you continue to feel like you're flayed and you are sickened one. Okay. So that means... Why is it not... I added it to your thing, but oh. I'm not seeing it. All right, let me just manually do the second. Some of the, the spell things are not working. Okay, second. So that means you have that slightly... bonus. Yeah, you get minus one to your checks, your DCs. You can't drink or eat anything. If you spend an action to throw up, you can try to save against the success and like not be sick anymore. And then to throw up, okay. Yeah, it's like illusion. You're, you're just like, it's like you feel like you need to throw up even though there's nothing there. Okay. Um. So that was it's two action spell, and then um, it doesn't have. I think it just steps one step closer. All right, Mukta, you are paralyzed. You can't move, you can't take any physical actions. You can continue to donate subs to people in chat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not doing much else right now, so why not? So you can make mental checks, right? So you can do like some kind of recall knowledge in this situation to see if maybe you can think of anything that would help in this situation. 
that's about all you have. I'm thinking I do not want to be paralyzed anymore. <laughs> Why don't we say, for the hell of it, give me a recall knowledge, um, a religion check. Religion, all right. Make it a secret check. All right. Um, you rack your brains at trying to come up with something that'll help you against these cultists, these ghouls, and nothing comes up. So, at the end of your turn, go ahead and make a DC 15 fortitude saving throw. All right. That is. Nope. 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 Uh, Fortunately not. Uh, I do like your strategy of gifting people subs in chat so they can then give you the hero points. For I mean, uh, you know. Uh. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So Mukta continues to be paralyzed. Uh, it wears off slowly over time, so the next turn it's going to be a slightly easier check on against the paralysis, but you are being held still. All right, Nulara. Uh, I'm going to try and shake this sickness off of me okay so you you go for my first action yep so make a uh fortitude yeah fortitude save yep uh 19 no it's a 20. what was it yeah it's a 20. Mm. uh well actually wait let me see what is what is the um sickened condition actually because say... against its DC. If it's against so the DC of the effect, then yeah, it's not enough. Okay. Can I try again? <laughs> you can. Okay. Uh, fortitude. Come on. So new large is like dry heaving in the hallway. <clears throat> Nineteen is again not enough. <laughs> it's just dry. Yeah. So two, you have two your... attempts at dry heaving and. No success. You have your bonus, right? Yeah, my inspire courage. It's I on don't see me. It. it doesn't oh. look like it's on the. Uh... Let's see. Inspire courage is a plus one bonus to attack rolls, damage rolls, and saves against fears, but not to this check. Gotcha. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for my third action, I'll just raise my shield. Okay. Mm hmm. All right. So at the end of your turn, you take you're gonna take the um, the persistent damage, which is mm -hmm. three mental damage. Uh, okay. Make a D just a flat check, a DC 15 flat check to see if the effects wear off. Okay. 18? So at the end of the turn, it goes. Where off. was that earlier? Let me see. Let me just go back and check the spell. Um, just until like the spell ends. It says the target recovers from being sick in this persistent damage. Ends. Oh, so this isn't the kind of thing where you're on fire and it can go out on its own. You can only do it by retching. So yeah, sorry, there is no flat check on this one. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to raise your hopes and dash them down again. It's My okay. Bad. I killed two of your ghouls already. That's good. Um, so that's the end of your turn, right, Nular? Mm-hmm. All right, Hal. You're safe, covered in shield. Everyone's All right. Inspired. I this will awesome uh, use an action to move up here my friends and then i will take uh, a electric arc against the ghouls who are next to mukta and nulara yep 30 feet yeah, yeah. If, that, if that's what it says it could do 19 reflex for both of them 19 reflex <laughs> So it's a critical and fail on the tonight. one against New Lara, so that's gonna be double damage. Yes, and thank you. The Hello. one against Mukta is also a fail, but not a critical fail. So the one fighting New Lara gets 16 points of damage because they critically failed. And so New Lara is like dry heaving, raising your shield, a lightning bolt <laughs> like rips around you and just shocks this thing like Ugh! And there's like the smell of like burnt flesh to kind of like just add to the nausea you're already feeling as this snooty ghoul is dead. Um, and then this one is going to take eight. Um, oh, be another plus one. Four. Uh, it would be one. Right? Yeah. So nine. 
So actually two more for that one. So that one's dead. This one here, it's like getting ready to feast on Mukta. It's flaying Mukta. The bear is getting through it. The lightning hits this one before arcing down the hallway. And this one also goes and drops down with his like hair, like singed. You killed both of them in one electric arc. Let's nice. go. Let's go, Hal. See, not hiding in the corner anymore. Wow. <laughs> He's okay. there when it counts. Uh -huh. Yeah. I will get real close hey, to music, Mukta man. and look him in the eyes. Oh, he's okay. That's an awesome Everything is okay in here. Mm. And that is my <laughs> turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was an awesome. You, two, you get two with one spell. That's so sweet. Oh, yep. Yeah, now we're back. Okay. You know what? All the ghouls are dead. Hero point. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think that's, that's valid, right? Coming out yeah. of this hallway... Frying two with an electric arc, like, that was yeah, awesome. absolutely. I will give you a hair point if you describe exactly how, how Hal conjures electricity. Okay, uh, Hal will move forward and he'll look at his new virtuoso loot. But what you don't see is that on the inlay of the loot there are lightning bolts, and they connect uh, to the the steel strings. And he strums a flamenco vring. And then he points at the guys, and then the, you see the lightning fly through the air and then strike both of them. Nice. Take your hero point for that. That's what heroes do. All right, Clovis. That's my mayor. <laughs> yes. Talk. It's, we'll talk about this later. It's interesting because like, to target it, you technically have to see the creature. But I'll give it to you because it was an awesome moment. Why is there a bear here? <laughs> yeah, right. You, like, you, you haven't seen the bear yet. Okay. So there's two doors, right? There's a, this door's closed still, or is it open? No, it's open. You can see it open. I mean, it should be open. Yeah, it's open. All right. And That's true. I'm you can see it too. Jaw attack against that. Ooh. All right, it. Uh, yes. What's your movement speed in this? Twenty-five. One? Still twenty-five. Oh, I thought it. No, no. What, yeah, what is your movement? I, I don't actually know. I don't either. Good question. Thought everything was my. Oh, same it's thirty character. feet of movement, but I think you have thirty feet of movement because you have the faster speed because you're. You took extra movement speed, right? You have 30 feet movement? Yeah, you can get exactly where you need to be. Perfect. That's exactly the amount of speed you need. That's your elvish nimbleness coming in handy. So 25 against this thing even. is a hit. The bear even has a little elvish blood in him. Okay, six points of damage against this thing. Reach out and take my... Attack. Um, twenty is a hit. Nice. Nine points. Tear in, you get a nice chunk of flesh. Still looks pretty sturdy. Nice. Lick my flop. Pause. Oh, that was all three actions, right? That's my turn. Perfect. Yep. Um, this one, um, he looks worried. You now saying, just... not sure if you can see the. Is that? I was saying he's not seeing the uh, the IC on the damage on the bear. I dragged it to the bear, so. Get the extra damage for fire curse. It's on there. I see it. it says plus one. It says fire curse plus okay. one. Mm -hmm. It's on there. All right. So uh, the first thing this one does is like it's it, it is like quite angry uh, and worried and looks around. You see its eyes like dart back down the hallway a bit. Um, it looks up at you. It raises its hands and as it like flicks its hands out, a black line of darkness tendrils races right through. Nulara and Clovis. So he's going to use the Grim Tendrils ability. Ooh. 
So I need a fortitude save from uh, Nulara and from Clovis. Come on. Natural 20! <laughs> natural 20. And hey, this is the natural 20 against this same thing. It's the same effect as last time. Yeah. You're right. Uh, the C of the same is 20, so it's not as critical success to you, Clovis, but it is a success. But with the crit, it takes it one step higher for you, Nular. So yes, this is absolutely 100%. You are unaffected by this again. Uh, Clovis, you're going to take half damage. Uh, Kaboom. So, Clovis, you're going to take five points of uh, negative damage. And it rips, oh, as the black tendrils rips through you, it opens up some of your flesh. You are now persistently bleeding. Ooh. So you have a persistent bleed effect on you. And then with its third action, you see it looks down south. And it basically uses all 30 feet of its movement to move away from you, and you don't have opportunity attacks or anything. Does the bear um, have an attack of opportunity? No. Does okay. not, unfortunately. Alright, that's his turn. Top of the round. Move to... And for the blue light, guys. Fortitude save? Uh-huh. Mm. Mm. Aaron Burr! Aaron Burr! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes down, so it's only a 14 now. 17, you shake off the effects at the end of your turn. Nice. You are no longer paralyzed by this ghoulish effect. Uh... Yep, you're good. Uh, not quite flooded. Not paralyzed. Perfect. Okay. But I think that's at the, I think the save's at the end of your turn, so you still don't get a turn. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Poor Mukta. All right, Nulara. Mm, okay, so I'm just gonna wipe the the shit that's on the sides of my mouth right now, and then I'm gonna go after uh, okay. the uh, so, the cultist. Do yep, I see? So okay, one, one stride action. Uh -huh, so that's ten, but that's not my full movement. Yet, no, you still right? got more movement. Okay, twenty-five. Okay. And yeah, twenty-five. And then from here, I'm going to. How far is this? Yeah, I'm going to try and throw my trident at him. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is now. This is historically a good chance for. Uh, nope, we're jinxing our... it. <laughs> and nope. I just had a natural twenty. <laughs> Listen, and I'm sickened. The chance of a natural 20 this time doesn't go down because you rolled a natural 20 last time. Okay. Right. I don't know. All right. Well, we did not, say we not, rolled six not. natural 20s. Chat, do you believe in the magical trident? Because I do. Get out of here with your math and logic, crit. Steve. Bring it on. Crit. Crit. Bring it on. Get your crits ready. No. Okay. There's a hit. 22. Uh, that's a power attack, though. So... Oh, uh, that's a hit, you said? It is, yeah. Uh, 23 points of piercing damage. Oh. The if 23 this, points this jabs, good. the trident slams in, the the, the cultist screams, howls in pain. It's not down, but it's it's very, very hurt and very bloodied. As, like, the, the trident like cuts across it, like, starts bleeding down its side as the trident clings to the floor right by its feet. I'll, I'll go shout. He's trying. He's trying to get to that blue light. <sighs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So. That's the end uh, of my turn. Yep. You oh, so, third act. Oh, no. Yeah, that's all yeah, my. Yeah, so because action. of that, you are going to take another 1d4 mental damage from okay. the persistent. Okay. Another four with an explosion. Thank you. Uh, so four points of damage, persistent damage at the end of your turn. All right, Hal. Okay. Sheesh. Uh, I will move. Twenty five gets you right into the bear square. Uh, 
I, I hear, I think you're muted. I saw you talking, but I don't hear you talking. Yeah, I'm just hemming and hawing on what I can do with Got it. You're trying one to action you're after one I move outside. Yeah, your run movement doesn't get you outside. You're not as fast yep. as, as L's, unfortunately. Um... Okay. I'm going to move up. Okay. To the bear's area. Uh -huh. Then I'm going to cast. Uh, I'm going to put the lights on the outside because I don't know if they can see it or not. As I hear them running away, so I'm going to put up some lights. Not a bad idea. New Laura can see because New Laura's got dark vision. But I don't know if the bear can do it, so... Right, no. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that's... And cast shield, and I'm done. Nice. Okay. Very cool. That's actually pretty good, because Clovis is about to have a bad time. So, um, yeah. Clovis, your turn. Rawr. Step out. I got her one strike. Okay. Yep, you have 30 feet and of movement again bear. coming in clutch here. Just enough to close the distance. And where it was previously pitch black for you, the lights of how begin dancing in the hallway, which gives the illumination you you need to see your target. Perfect. Uh, 19 is a hit. Yeah. It's like right it. at the edge of the light. <gasps> Max damage. Max Let's damage. Let's go. Uh, Clovis. How would you like to do this? Yeah! Let's go! Oh. Let's go. Let's go. I put my claws, my paws right on his shoulder, and I just bite his head, pull his head off, and spit it on the ground. Oh. The head goes rolling. The creature falls over dead. Does and... the water start moving again? <laughs> yeah. Back down, on, back down and I'll, I'll yeah, Nular is still still sickening. So it's like, so yeah, rich. the cult just dries. He falls down, right? Mooka, like... I spit the head out. I didn't eat it. I spit it out. <laughs> uh, Nulara is still like, ugh, ugh, like, like, kind of like, no, you have no weapon anymore, right? You're like choking up the 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 sort of like <laughs> phantom pain. You still feel like you're being flayed. Um, around you guys, right? The sounds of this combat of this like chanting, the cult of the canker, sort of for the queen, for the queen, dies out back to that eerie silence that like permeates this whole lair as you guys um, are now like hyper aware. There are other creatures here that might be aware of your presence. Nulara, would you like to retch? I yes, mean, please. You, you, you get three attempts at retching. <laughs> so make, make your retch attempt. Uh, fortitude, right? Fortitude, yeah. DC 20 fortitude. Again with the 19, that's what three in a row. What is this? If this is another nineteen, I oh it's my god. Less, Lanta. it's a sixteen. Don't 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 tempt fate here. I'm closing my eyes. Oh wait, I hit it. Oh wow, oh. I'm really sick, you guys. Nilar's I'm still dry heating and taking wall. and taking um taking more damage. Uh, three more points of mental damage, Nulara. Uh, Clovis, you, you spin around, you're all happy because you've killed this thing, right? You look down, and you can see there's like a drip, drip, because you're still sliced from the black tendril. You're still bleeding as well. Oh, wow. I'm so dying. So, guys. technically, at the end of your turn... Yeah, do me a favor. Do, um, do a flat DC 15 check to see if the bleed goes away. You're going to take four more points of bleed damage. Um, and then and then you manage to, like, the wound kind of cover, covers itself up. So just four more points of damage for Clovis. Um, so, yeah, so I think, like, at that moment, like, Mukta and Hal kind of come out into the hallway to see what's going on, right? And Nulara is just, like, on one knee, like, dry heaving, like, almost crying in pain because you feel like you're being, like, all your skin is being taken away. And you start looking down, and it actually, you can see bits where your flesh is missing. I would like to use... Uh... Well, I cannot use that. I got to wait 10 minutes, so I'm going to cast uh, Soothe on her, just to make okay. sure. Uh, well, can I... Well, I'm going to cast Soothe, because I'm she's puking, and I don't want to get close. Yep, <laughs> okay. So you can go ahead and roll the Soothe heal. 
Oh, uh, thank you. Okay. So you get healed for 11. Um, Mukta, is there anything you're doing in this moment to help? Or are you just like watching from the distance? <laughs> I rush out, bow in hand, ready to strike. There's a bear. There's a bear. There's a bear. <laughs> Uh, of course there's a bear. That's Clovis. <laughs> All right, next round oh. of... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, I go up to Clovis. Open. Open it. <laughs> I look in his mouth, make sure he's not got, not got any dead creatures he's chewing on. And then that's the end of my turn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Nulara, make me three more fortitude saves as you try to stop, <laughs> stop the pain. It would be so funny if this is another funny. This is how new Lara Okay, dies. we're it's good. It. We're yeah. good. Congratulations. The pain, the flay, like someone like it snaps out of it and you realize it was all illusionary. It was all in your mind. <laughs> you're no longer sickened. And as well, you're no longer um, taking persistent damage. Congratulations on getting out of this alive. Now, experience-wise... Um, yes. You guys get 120 experience. This was a severe combat encounter. In addition, I'm going to give you a bonus 20 because they were under the effects of a, of a special thing called Righteous Fury because you guys were in this holy place, which made them all more powerful than they would have been normally. So take a total of 140 experience for that fight. So that's 570, 570. total? Yeah. All right. Is that what you guys yep. got, 570? Yep. yep. And as a reminder to our viewers, we are doing quick ex leveling, which means 800 experience points instead of 1,000. So as as the combat kind of comes to an end, and um, as you guys, as Nulara stops retching and things return to silence, um, you realize you're still deep in the heart of this like enemy territory. Uh, although now your eyes drift off as your dancing lights kind of blink where they all came out of in that room. And it seems like for the moment, the restricted section is no longer under guard. And with that, we will go to our break for the night. All right. Nice combat guys. Woo. I know we had a little technical issues in the I middle could, with the computer. I had, I had no idea when I turned that corner, I thought I was gonna have to use two sprite actions to get to it. I was surprised. <laughs> It was the second time, two turns in a row, where that extra five feet of movement you have from your racial or your ancestral feet made a difference, yep. right? It just shows you yep. are a little bit faster than everyone around you, and um, it's paying off because if you know things running away, you're yeah, it's it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it makes sense. He had thirty feet of movement, and then you had thirty feet of movement. So if he was next to you and ran, you can catch him. Yep. New Lara couldn't. New Lara had to check the the thing. So yeah. as we head to our break, reminder, we have our site set on 100 followers on Twitch. We keep that. You guys all gave us a bunch more tonight, so let's keep that going Thank you. and rolling. Um, we still plan to do a, a fan uh, a one shot that influences this campaign with some of our fans that want to play. So uh, if you're interested in that, help us get to the 100. Uh, don't forget, head on over to Rick's channel, which is Hallowed RPG on Twitch. He is trying to get to his 50 subscriber goal so he can get a lot of these features that we have on DM Steve. So uh, he isn't far off. I don't know how close are you now, Rick. You're like uh, I wish they were, I wish they were 50 follow, uh, subscribers, but 35 followers, 15 more. Sorry, followers. I keep getting this up. I'm getting my YouTube. Stick. So those of you <laughs> who joined us tonight for the first time that you you're checking our channel, head over to Hollowed RPG. He's streaming the same thing from the player point of view. Just give him a follow. Help him get to that goal. That's not too. It won't cost you anything. Um, another friendly reminder: We'll take Twitch Prime subs or paid subs as you guys have them uh, on this channel on Dan Steve, and uh, every little bit helps. And thank you to uh, Mukta and Richard for <laughs> showering subs on our viewers. That's awesome. So, I mean, I had to be, I had to be of some use during that combat. Well, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, now you guys need to take those channel points you're going to earn and give a hero point to Mukta because he deserves it, right? So, we'll be back in ten minutes from our break. It is currently eight forty-two, so we'll be back at eight fifty-two to close out the rest of tonight's episode of the Abomination Vaults. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you guys soon. I wait for we were made to ride. You and I were first in line. All right, guys, thanks for hanging in there on our break. We are back. 
to close out the rest of tonight's session. So, you guys had a nice encounter with the Cult of the Kanker, including your arch nemesis, Kinky Ghoul. It was no more. Um, combat has ended. You guys have gotten back to sort of a moment to catch your breath and figure out what your next step is because you still are down here in the library with who knows how many other of the cult around. Um, the choice is yours, heroes. What is your next move? Uh, that uh, restricted area is open now. I don't hear nothing from it. Perhaps uh, we go take a look uh, while I play some beautiful music from inside the bathroom. Uh, I think it'd be better than staying in this hallway. Who knows what might come out next? A lot of is true. Here, take some lights so as you can see. Uh, wait, you're not go. Yo, you meant that bathroom, right? <clears throat> yep. When when could you start <laughs> turning into a bear, Clovis? My uh, that was my very first time. How did I do? I was scared as shit. Are you still a bear? No, I just turned out of it, that's why I'm talking. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. I, I was actually just checking. Can you yeah. talk while you're a bear? Do you have do you just talk normal when you're a bear? No, I looked it up, it said no. Like I thought it said what I read on it is I can't talk. Like I can you know, obviously growl, make bear sounds. Okay. Sound like chewy. Can't talk. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I can't do chew. I do yeah. that. I didn't see anything that specifically says you can't. It just says you get the animal trait. Maybe the animal trait um, means no talking. I don't know. I think I think it was that thing you sent today I read up on. Got it. So okay. I have to look a little bit more into it. Perfect. So so how you send the lights, but then you went... Did you go back to the bathroom, really, Hal? I, I, I went back to the bathroom, but I forgot uh, Mukta was in there, so I came back to uh, <laughs> berate him and tell him to be quiet because there's a lot of doors in here. Yes, there are. So as, as you guys kind of step in and the lights dance in, you can see in the restriction section, right, rows of bookshelf run the length of this room. Oh, wait, I think um, uh, I need the uh, the move music. Here we go. Rows of bookshelf run the length of this room, although in places they've been damaged or tipped over. The books that once sat on the ruined shelves appear to have been relocated onto other shelves. Several doors lead out of this room. But the double door to the north is the most impressive. It's made of stone, carved with a strange feminine shape, rising from the ghost-laced mist of a cemetery in an empty graveyard. So yeah, there's just tons of books scattered. Some are like on the floor open. Some are like, there's just broken bookshelves that are kind of, look like they're probably in the process of being repaired. And a couple of other bookshelves just stacked with all kinds of tomes. Okay. Uh, I want to take a look around. Uh, Mokta, do you want to help me? Come here. Come next to me, friend. And uh, I will cast guidance on him. Okay. And say, maybe you can find something. I'm not too worried. Uh, if you find some music, so please tell me. I will go around and investigate the room. Okay. Yeah. Give me that... Um... So you're in. So you're investigating. So there's really two actions. Right? There's like searching and investigating. So searching is like looking for stuff, and investigating is like trying to like use a recall knowledge ability to sort of understand, maybe like some of the lore about what you're seeing or anything like that. Like you could do right. a religion yeah. investigation and see if there's anything religious about the scene. I'm more searching the room for anything useful, anything hidden. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and make a perception check. All right, with guidance. And then how I assume you're refocusing because that's what you do in your downtime, or you I would like to, time? yes. Okay. Start strumming a little tune. Okay, and then um, Nulara and Clovis, what are you guys doing during this time? Um, also going to be refocusing. Okay, Clovis is refocusing. Moved his looking. I'm gonna walk around the room with uh, Borbo. Yeah, I was going to... Over my shoulder. Right. Yeah. So Borbo look, is, like, really kind of nervous. You hear him kind of muttering to himself a lot, Nulara. And he's just like, oh, oh, I'm supposed to be here. We're going to get in trouble. We're not allowed to be here. 
What do you mean? Why? What's in here? This is this is the restricted section. I was never, ever, ever, ever allowed anywhere near, except for the one time I did, and my master took my finger. Took your finger off? Yeah. <sighs> she asked. He asked me. He asked me to deliver a book to the book lady down here, and I did, but I, I didn't. I didn't ask if it was okay, and they took my finger. It's okay. I deserved it. It was my fault. I should. I should have asked. I should have asked. No. No, you don't deserve your finger to be cut off. Don't say that. Huh. It's okay, they put a new one on me. A better one. A bigger one. Yeah, but your master also betrayed you at the end, so... <laughs> everything... <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Crying. I... Borbo. I'm, I'm gonna lift him off of my shoulder and then put him... Yeah. Like, right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm gonna show him the uh, uh, stone doors for a second. And then I'll ask... Is the book lady behind those doors? He kind of like sniffles and he says, oh, no, no. He says that way, that's, she's even meaner than my master. I would not, I would not want to go in. That, that's the temple. That's where they, that's where they did their worship the most. No, no, that's where, that's where Nazakarin lives. Nazakarin? Nazkazarin, sorry. Nazkazarin? Nas Kazarin, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll put the name in chat so you can see it. Uh, but like, Kazuntait. <laughs> he's like, what? I can't sneeze. Uh, but yeah, this is like that's that's an angry, evil lady, like obsessed to a fault. Like if she wanted to research a topic, let's say she wanted to research, uh, I don't know, torture effects on someone. Well. Guess who's volunteering for uh, that kind of work? And he starts and crying she's, again. And she's different from the uh, I'll rub soothing circles on his back. And that's and she's different from the um, book lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. book lady uh, behind you. Behind me. Her office is, is that way, and you kind of spin around, and he he lets you know like this door down here on the south, uh, the southwest side. Sorry, southeast side of the room. It's like that's he says that that's where her office is, that's where she spent most of her time. Mm. And so while while they're doing this, and Mukta, you're kind of going around the room and like looking. Um, you give it a good like once over. You don't find any sort of like secret doors or anything that like jumps out at you. Um, Boat like this door here to the south as you're listening, you can hear like conversation, and it sounds like two ghouls are having a. A debate about whether f flesh, like dead flesh, ripened with violent fungi, tastes better than naturally decaying meat. And they're having a very astute, very well argumentative debate of the merits of using the fungus to flavor your food and what. Uh, I do my best impression of Nulara. Huh. Huh. <laughs> and. And then also, like, while you're listening to this, your eyes are on this bookshelf. There are definitely books in these shelves that are from Morley Bent's list, for sure. Like, this is, like, a treasure trove of, like, forbidden knowledge. And, like, a lot of the books that Morley Bent was super interested in can easily be found on these shelves. If you guys just take the time to do it. Ah, uh, Clovis, looks like we have uh, more books from Morley Bent's list here. Also, it's also kind of just a library in general. So, like, if you were to, like, use this library as, like, a source of, like, doing a recall knowledge, like, if you need to know topics on, like, history, arcane, occult topics, or anything like that, you guys could spend some time in this library, and it would give you a bonus to your check. Because it's pretty, pretty well stocked. You get a plus two bonus for using this room if you are researching some of those topics. I'll uh, tell everyone to put my lips up. Shh. I hear, I also hear more uh, cool voices coming from this door here. Yeah, that's the door you hear the voices from. Borbo's telling you that this door on the other yeah. door, Nulara, is where the book ladies lives. And then there's also a, a quiet door on the east. And on the north is like double stone door as like. Mukta like listens in 
Um, it doesn't sound like anything's. It's hard to hear through the stone, but it definitely sounds quieter than the south, that's for sure. When you said the book lady, is that the one that, that was the ghost that we killed? Um, the book lady that Borbo's talking about is the lady that his master had a relationship with. Um, he's, once he was down here, he, he, he apologized to Nulara and said he thought it was that other lady. You know, he has a hard time telling non-goblinoids apart, but the one that you dealt with was not the book lady in question. That book lady lives here, and he's pointing at the room he believes she used to stay at. Fair enough. So, ten minutes passes, and you guys refocus your focus points? Yeah. Nulara? Mm. I have some more spells left, uh, and uh, including I can continue to play the music for us. Yeah. Um, should we at least try to go down here to the, the the office, or do you want to gather up the books that Mukta mentioned and go back to the bathroom, or even better, go back to the town? We could bring back all the books. I mean, it's getting a little bit uh, heavy carrying all these. That's true. And we can come back here after an hour or so. Uh, once you once we drop them off, and we have another uh, five or six hours, and uh, maybe we can do what we need to do, and then go back for the evening. All right. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, it doesn't. You're right. It doesn't make sense to go down deeper with us carrying all this weight. Also, before we leave, I was wondering, I whispered all of this, by the way. Um, Borbo said that behind me is where the book lady is. And behind those stone doors at across from us is this other lady called, I'm going to fuck this up, Na what's her name? <laughs> Nakazarin. Nakazarin? Thank you. Um, yeah, I, that pain. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, apparently she's an obsessed lady who worship. Uh, she's just obsessed with worship. And I'm thinking that maybe she's the head honcho over these um, creatures that we've been fighting. So if you're not 100% how I, I think we should get you and maybe Clovis to back to 100% before we even get further in. Right. It is up to you. I mean, is maybe perhaps that is the place where all the other ghouls are coming from? I, uh, I do not know. I don't want to uh, run in there when there are like 15 of them. So I, maybe Mocha can take a look. You can just lightning bolt them all, right? I, I mean, I could, I, I could <laughs> spark at them and, you know, strum the loot, the light loot of lightning, and and kills them all. But who knows? Uh, but what what happens then if there's a whole bunch of them? Uh, I mean, she might be there by herself. But we don't have a lot of time. Remember, uh, the about what uh, Morley said: twenty eight more days. Uh, yeah. Depending on if it's a blue moon or not. Get it? Get it? Blue moon? Yeah. <laughs> I do still want to camp here, though. We might... Yeah, I, I still want to camp here. Okay. So Mukta cleans yeah. out the chamber pot in the other room. But no. I want to go back. He doesn't do that? I'm not staying in no, that room. Then. No, no, Hal. I mean, like, camp. You know, we're going to pick the dungeons. The, the, you know, the darkest no. area in here. Yes, no. we will. No, you have to experience these things. You're, you're an adventurer now. I don't know about that. We can it's... always just walk back. I can understand if we traveled out into the woods and there was no way to go back to where there is nice, comfortable and down bedding and pillows. And hey, I mean, for crying out loud, that we get two places and they offer it for free along with the food. I mean, how much better can that be? 
of course, me playing the music for the people, but I mean, really. Yeah, you know, but... counterpoint. Sorry, Nulara, I have to say it. You know how, you know who probably never has to go camping? Besides me? Who's that? The mayor. Mm. Oh? I mean, of course, someone, uh, uh, you know, someone of uh, that kind of importance, that office, that respect. Of course, he would never have to go camping. I mean, people wait on him uh, hand and foot. So uh, so do you mean that the place that we went to when the, the party was like not really the Menhem Manor, but more of the Mayor Manor? That's where the Mayor stays? Well, I mean, they got that manor by being in charge, right? I mean... And the mayor is in charge, right? Whoever is in charge can build their own manor, I suppose. A better manor. One to impress the, even the most... Um, impress any girl and even the most... Uh, unwilling fathers, I suppose. Yeah, that would be something, because Caroline's father wanted me to make something of myself before I came back for Caroline, and if I was... Uh, living in a big house like that? Um, how do you think I could live in that house? Do we kick them out? Do we Like we're kicking the ghouls out of the dungeon? Or, I mean, we do that, then Nulara can get the magic sword. Hal. My god, oh. Hal. You're a, you're a genius. You're, you're a genius. I can't believe you thought of that. Of course, if you were mayor, you would be able to have your manor and press Caroline. See, this is why you're the brains of this operation, Hal. Hmm. Well, I don't want to stay down here. I want to stay back in the uh, town. Um, maybe we can get a closer look. I can ask the, um, the mayor's daughter. What was her name again? I forget. Her name is not Caroline, of course, but I could ask for a tour. Doriana. Um, yeah, Doriana. I can ask for a tour from Doriana. Maybe we take a look around. I well, take a look around. Is, is Hal not good with names, or is Rick not good with names? Uh, it is in uh, my notes, but uh, yeah, I can only read a, the music. I so. know Doriana. <laughs> yeah. I imagine you have like, a filing. Alarmity. Alarmity is awesome. Yeah, I, I didn't want to like step on your bit if you just don't remember anyone's name as in character. That's yep. fine. So, uh, you want to stay here. I don't want to go in the temple i i think maybe we go in the door uh and i point to the uh the main librarian lady office down here um we could probably get through one or two but i don't want them coming out of the main temple if there's like a whole horde of them if there are templars in the temple you know we also we also don't know whatever this canker is that they keep telling that we're going to be uh, offered to. Uh, that is like true. Maybe it's a giant sore <laughs> monster? Like yeah, pus yeah. oozing from its uh, spoils and its red skin dripping blood and you know, all that good stuff? All that bad stuff? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. What? You tell us, Nulara, what would you like to do? Honestly, right now, all I'm thinking of is that Borbo has given us the end of his deal and it's time for us or at least me to, you know, honor my end. Um, so maybe free? before we go up, I don't know, Borbo, just carrying you around is giving me so much guilt. Like I'm swinging nice. my trident. I'm I'm swinging my trident. I'm getting sick. There's black tendrils c coming after me, and then you're just there. I mean, he did almost kill me. This, 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 does no one else remember this? I remember. I it was a different for. Form. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Foreclosure, though, Borbo. We you have to sincerely apologize to Mukta. He drowned at a, in what a dirty did, What swamp. did Borbo do that was so bad? You almost killed him. Okay, well, almost. I've killed lots of people. Almost killing shouldn't be something that I have to apologize for. Borbo, I'm already having a little bit of compassion towards you. If you oh, don't you. sincerely 
apologize to Mokta right now for almost killing him? I mean, I kind of see where it's coming from. <laughs> I mean, almost stealing something isn't stealing it, so, you know. Right? You get it? You get it? But look, no. if, that, if this is going to make it, fine, I'll apologize. Where, where is he? Can you, can you point me towards him? No, sincerely. Okay. Here. There. That's Mukta. Mukta. I'm so sorry that I tried to... I'll shake to... him. I'll oh, shake oh, him. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Mukta. I'm sorry that my master gave me the command to protect that okay. place at all costs, and I had no choice other than to defend it. Is that... Is that... That could, I I wish he hadn't made me do it to you. Does that count? That kind of counts. Yeah, don't worry. How do about you it. feel? I'm not going to speak for you, Mokta. Don't worry about it. You wouldn't be the first person that almost killed me. You wouldn't even be the first. You wouldn't even be my first friend that's almost killed me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I feel like me and you have a lot in common, Mukta. And so maybe you could just tell the nice lady to go ahead and free me. And then I can just, you know, be done with this horror that has lasted for centuries upon centuries upon centuries. Sure thing. High five. Oh, sorry. Aww. He begins crying again. <laughs> no tears or anything, but just like. <laughs> he's he's oh, very horrible. Pathetic. Well, after this, we're, we might meet up with the book lady. Is there anything from you that you want us to say to her? Like a quick fuck you or something? Uh, I mean, no. I, out of out of all the people that I had to deal with in my line of work and all the people that treated me terrible, she was probably the only one that ever showed me any ounce of compassion. She would give me a little bit of extra food and drink and she would hit me a little bit less hard than everyone else would and you know as long as I would tell her everything about my master she would treat me pretty decent like you know seven lashings instead of eight you know how drow are it's, a, it's, it's in their nature it's racist well, I'm gonna how turn. How <laughs> drow do you know? As far as drow go, she's pretty top shelf. Okay. Well, I can't promise that the afterlife is gonna bring you more peace. That's not up to me. But you'll be meeting a. You'll be meeting someone that's keen on giving second chances, and. I hope she... No, she chooses right. Well, it was nice meeting you, Borbo. It was nice meeting you, Nulara and Mukta and the other people whose names I never bothered to learn. I apologize. Especially yeah. you, the plant creature hiding in the back. I'll miss you most of all. Yeah. Good luck on your journey. And then I pull the gem out. And as soon as you pull it out, room the doll goes like lifeless. It's just a like a rag doll. I look at the gem really quick. Good luck. And then I smash it on the floor. Give me a, give me like an athletics check. I, I'm just imagining, like, I threw it on the ground. Just a yeah. slow-mo of Nilara throwing the gem. Uh, 23. Reasonable. So up and hits her in the head. Oh, yeah, look at that. So here's what happens. You slam the gem on the ground. It's a very hard throw. You know, there's probably hammers and tools I could use, but you just chuck it at the ground with enough force that it hits, and there's, like, a crack that forms in the middle, and then as it, like, cracks, you feel, like, an explosion of shadow that like envelops the whole room. And for just a second, everything in this room goes completely dark and wrapped in shroud and all the dancing lights go out and then come back 
as the room, the whole perimeter of this room looks to be wreathed in shadow. And you all feel a presence here that is unfamiliar to most of you, but not to you, Nulara. This is a presence you have felt plenty. And you feel a warm embrace on your shoulders and almost feel like something's leaning in to your like ear to whisper to you. None of the rest of you can see or feel this. Only Nulara. You guys do sense all the shadows. And, it's, and it says, you know, thank you for your compassion and your service. You have done well. Take this. And you feel like a kiss on the back of your neck. And then instantly the rest of the shadows like recede out of the room under all the doors. The lights come back on and uh, everything is back to normal. So you have gotten a um, sort of uh, reward from Phrasma directly for freeing the soul. And for your act of compassion, she gives you um, a momentary prophetic glimpse of your fate. So mechanically, what this means is you get plus a plus two status bonus to a single check that you make, which you can apply even after you see your roll and determine if you want to add the plus two. And you have one month to use this this prophetic what? boon. And that's a reward from Phrasma for freeing this soul. One month game time or real time? One month game time. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, one month game time. So, you know. We are on the 27th of Faras, so you have until the 27th of um, Gazran to use this. And so Very cool. you, everyone saw the shadows like do this weird thing and blink out the lights and disappear, but nobody else saw or felt the like embrace that you got, Nular. That was for you privately. I actually kind of like roll my shoulders a little bit, unsure how I feel about that embrace but still grateful for the boom all right whoever has the, the whoever you. has that gem can now delete it from their inventory yeah i have it and so yeah so there is this weird shadows you all see this and then um again it's quiet and then your eyes are kind of like look to the door where you know Borbo says the book lady is, is waiting on just the other side. Well, that's what he says. And what do you do next? When no you... one is looking, Mukta is going to try to uh, quietly maybe uh, take the doll. <laughs> yeah, you just want to like take the doll? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's do a thievery check. To see if you're trying to do it without anyone noticing, you can do it against everyone's uh, perception DC. Yeah. Uh, 17. Not the the best. Um, no. You beat you beat Nulara. You beat Hal. You uh, you meet their perception, but you do not beat um, Clovis. Clovis is the sole person that sees you steal the doll. So when everyone's eyes are averted. Mukta like scoops up the doll and Clovis you're watching this and you see he's trying to secretly take this doll and you are aware that he's doing this what would you like to do in that moment you can let it go you can say something like what do you do just looks at Mukta and just kind of smiles so Mukta there's a knowing smile from Clovis That's let him know he sees it, but he's okay with it. I smile. <laughs> I just give a, a tight smile nod back. <laughs> she kind of a little blushing that he saw me. What would your mother say if she knew you were taking creepy dolls? Ah, well, this wouldn't be the first time I did not listen to my mother, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's why he almost died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. So, what's next, guys? Book All right, Mr. Room? Mayor. <laughs> Do you want us to come up first or check this book lady out? I mean, if it is up to me, I want to go back to the town, but there are three of you and just one of me. So, if you all want to go 
through these doors to the bottom, I'm all for it. I will play the music, and you guys will kick the ass. Hell, 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 hell. My friend. Think of, what was it? Carolina? Carolina? Caroline? Caroline. Caroline, right. Mm. You want to impress her, yes? You want to uh, of course. win her over? Her father, win her, win, win her hand? Yes. Start the family, make money, little ones? No. 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 <laughs> oh. Oh, well, uh, either way, win her hand. You have to start believing in yourself, huh? Take charge. That's what the mayor would do. That's what a hero would do. That's what you would do, Hal. I'm still not uh, going up front. <laughs> so, then what's your marching order, guys? I'm going to be in front. And what actions are you taking? I'm going to defend. Defend from Nulara. Avoid notice. Avoid notice from Mukta. Sustain the lights for Hal? Yep. And then close. That leaves you. What is your exploration activity? I think I'm going to go with uh, this also. The Which one? notice avoid notice avoid okay notice. very cool so um very good so uh yep you guys can go ahead and move up to that door uh with new lara shield at the ready leading the way i thought we were well, gonna go up oh were you going up i thought you were going to the book room no uh... sorry I, I misread that situation then because yeah. how i was yeah. saying i'm three voted out voted three to one i thought that meant what you nope. guys were going I didn't vote, but yeah the way the way um Three said that Nalara. I thought we were going in too. Uh, oh, let's Ooh. go out. How about uh, how about if we grab uh, some more bulk yeah, the of the books? books? Mm -hmm. Um, I can grab another bulk. I don't know if anybody else can grab some stuff. Let's grab it on the way out. Yeah, there's more books here. There's lots of books in this room that's on your list. How much I can carry? How many more? Da, da, so, da. if you guys would like to, you guys can spend the next like 10, 15 minutes looking for titles so you can all give me um perception checks as you look for titles if that's what you want to do for this exploration phase yeah that's what i'll do okay everyone go ahead and give me it wow wow so, so <laughs> i actually <laughs> want to look she's mad because she's got to go up she's like god damn i'll, I'll, look for... I'll leave no, them to look look for the books for Morlebent. I want to actually look for anything maybe about the Gauntlet or uh, Belcora herself. Okay, so something more specific to the, like, mysteries of this place, right? Yes. Sure. Give me a, uh, a perception. So, Nulara, you spend this time, you're looking through all of this, you find no titles that match. I don't know. There's nothing in here. I don't <laughs> It doesn't help that you don't speak a lot of languages, and these books are not yeah, all no, I don't speak one. Uh, Hal is able to find one bulk worth of book, and Clovis is able to find two bulk worth of book in this search. So in total, it's three bulk you guys have access to from this activity. I'm going to use uh, the hero point Nulara gave me. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're well, you have for... a plus two though to your check because we're in the library. Well, if you're if you're researching a topic, it would take a longer than like a, a ten minute use for that plus two. You know, that's mm -hmm. like sit down and like spend some downtime like researching something. Um, so yeah, you look and you do a pretty thorough investigation and look, but um, unfortunately, nothing jumps out of those topics. Almost as if maybe they were pruned, like that knowledge is pruned and maybe more hidden. Um, so yeah, so that's three bulk worth of book. I don't know how you guys want to distribute the three bulk. Um, I think I can take one bulk, maybe. Can, take, uh, can somebody take a bulk? I can, I can take, take one. Bulk. Yeah, I can take one. Okay, so Mukta, uh, you can just, you have, well, you have one already, so you can just increase your yeah. your inventory. And then I think Clovis already has some in his inventory, right? 
I yeah. have yep. three. You are... Already has three. So you can just worth. add another bulk yeah. if you want, yeah. Yeah, no, this is me adding it. So I'm carrying a total of three. Three total, okay. Mm hmm. So that's one to Mukta, one to Globus, one to Nulara. That's all three books that you find. So as you guys are doing that, you guys are looking for books. Um, right, like, basically right down in this door as you're searching. The door, like, flings open. And there's two cultists, like, talking to each other. And one is, like, you hear, like, Mukta, like, you've convinced me, man. I got to mm -hmm. try this violet fungi. Um, and in that moment, you guys are all freezing as you're, like, stuffing books in your bag. And you look up. Um, they seem kind of distracted by their conversation. Um but I need everyone to go ahead and roll initiative here. Oh, shit. Now, these guys are taking a minus two penalty for being distracted in conversation. So they get a minus two on their perception um, initiative rolls. So I would take it that I'm not avoiding notice. Nope. You, in this case, you were not avoiding yep. notice because you were, you were searching for books. Yes, that's fine. My bad. The lights are not the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I'm wrong terribly right now. Damn. Um, so they get a minus two, but they still roll pretty good. Mm -hmm. I guess you guys are more distracted. Uh, oh, We're stuffing our bags. Oh, I don't books. see there. Oh, I rolled a uh, 18. No, sorry. Yeah, I rolled an 18. I forgot to click my... Uh, okay. I just ro rolled perception, so... <laughs> Perfect, yeah. So with an 18, uh, so, you know, you're still going to go after them. So the door opens, you guys are stuffing books in your bags, and everyone's, like, like not ready for this. And uh, they, like, open the door, they look back, yeah, I'll try the violet fungi, turn around. And as you're stuffing books, they go, what the hell? And then they, like, flare up in anger, and you can see these are two of the bigger, tougher, heavier blue robe people that definitely have been more challenging for you guys. And we are starting combat. Oh shit! Okay, let's do this. Uh, this one uh, looks like looks at the door, and then we see Mukta and Nulara right in front. Looks back and forth between the two, and says, "I got the one on the left. You get the one on the right." Um, reaches his hand up, um, and casts a Phantom Pain spell on you, Mukta. So, Mukta, I need you to make a DC 20 will save. Also, Mukta, you took the extra hero point that Nilara gave you. That was the one you just used? Yep. Okay, so you're back down. Uh -huh. okay. So... Uh, so you fail. Uh -huh. uh, so you're gonna I have not rolled above a 10, I think, for this fast. Four points of mental damage. Danger and dies. And much like the last, much like Nulara, you feel this pain hitting your brain, and you can just feel the strips of flesh being torn from your body, like you are being flayed alive. Um, you also are going to take you are you get the second condition. Um, let's see, why did that not add it? Um, okay. So you now have uh, persistent damage until you retch as well as the second condition. Okay. Um, and then after he casts that, he uh, steps one like step in front of Mukta. All right, and that leaves the second one who steps um, right into the doorway here with his step action, looks at Nulara, reaches his hand up, and ca like casts a spell and a, gr a green beam of light comes from his oh. outstretched fingers and washes over you. So this is a ray of enfeeblement. So it's gonna oh. make an attack roll. <laughs> it's a critical attack roll hit. Ready? Okay. So what that means is you this make is the like attack roll. D &D if it net, succeeds, uh, you're gonna have one less, uh, one less level of success on your save because you got a crit. So make a fortitude saving throw, Nular. Fortitude, come on. Twenty-six. So you go from a success, but because he crit, it drops it to a failure. Okay. Uh, so you, you become um, enfeebled too. So you okay. feel weaker. Yeah, so it's like the D&D &D ray of enfeeblement? Yes. Mm. Except for it actually adds the actual mm -hmm. enfeebled condition. Um, there you go. So you are enfeebled too, 
Um, I think that just means you have to go minus two on anything strength based because you're weak. Okay. Uh, but that's their I turn. Can't get out of it. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Damn. Mukta. All right. Do I have to do anything for this spell? Uh, you are being flayed, so you can try to retch to like get rid of the effects. It takes an action to retch. Um. Sure, I'm going to try to retch. <laughs> okay. Make a fortitude saving throw. Fortitude. Show Nulara how it's done. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, sorry, a sixteen is not success. So you, you're like trying to like get rid of this like mental image. This pain is causing you to like retch as you watch yourself being flayed. Doesn't doesn't shake it. All right, I will. Uh... Uh, I will stride. Okay. So these are like, these things are actually tall bookshelves, so you can't stride through the bookshelves. All right. I probably so... should have drawn like lines that like denote that they're um, blocking line of sight, but there's like missing books in the middle, so you can kind of see through it. All right, let's see here. Then I would... Can I go here? Sure. It's 25 feet moving. That's 30. 30, yep, because I do not have anything in my hands at the moment, or don't have any weapons in my hands. Yep, so you go on all fours and start running, scuttling. Any attacks? Nope. I quickly pull out my short bow and attack the one that attacked me. Yep, go for it. It's not flat footed. No, it is not. That's a hit. All right. Wow. One. No. He like yanks the like arrow. It is but a flesh wound and throws it on the ground. That's my turn. Awesome. All right, Hal. Uh, I will do what Hal does, and I will do a lingering composition and inspire courage. My performance is... I was not another, impressed by your performance. Let's hit another crit. You got this. Okay, that's a success. So, three nice. rounds. All right. Three rounds, and I will also do the electric arc. Yes. DC 19 reflex to both of those guys. Yep, within 30 feet. Uh, they one succeeds and one fails. So the one in the and... front succeeds and takes half, and the one in the back fails and takes the full 10. And the lightning courses through both of them. Okay, in this <laughs> moment. That is my turn. Karate Kid has given Nulara a hero point. <laughs> yeah. so, yes. Thank you, here, <laughs> Clovis, it is Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Karate Kid. Oh, Clovis is. Go back behind the bookshelf. And CJ has donated 4,000 in total to our Battle Royale one shot. So we're now 25% hey. of the way there. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Well, Clovis looks up in the air, points up. Claps his hands together, and he is going to cast yes. Sudden Bolt. Yes. Which target? Um, I will do it at this guy right here. Okay. So the uh, reflex save. Okay. It's a success, so it's going to take half damage. 4d12. Ooh. So Damn. 26, half. 13 
So the lightning you watch is like in this middle of this room, out of nowhere, this like storm cloud sort of like swirls above its head. And there's a quick like flashback to like Clovis in like the glade with the little druid teaching him how to cast it. And he's like, you must tap into that anger, Clovis. I know it's inside of you. And then we cut back here to this scene and there's a close up of Clovis just unleashing a lightning fury right on this target. Like, He's I channeling know. his inner bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah. All right, very strong. And then you still got one more action, I believe. No, I uh, strided behind oh, the bookshelf, strided. and that was two actions. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Nulara, it is your turn. Okay, I'm starting to get frustrated because these cultists keep trying to get me sick. So for my first action, I'm going to take a step. Okay. My second action, I'm going to close this door. <laughs> right in his face? Nice. <laughs> oh, that is awful. Uh-huh. Like, okay. And then for my third action, I'm going to attack this cultist with my trident. That is <laughs> I'm, I'm, See, I'm per- I want to be a stickler and say you probably don't have your trident drawn. But in this awesome moment, I'm going to let it fly. So you oh, interact okay. to close the door and draw your trident in one awesome motion. Yeah. Let's uh, oh, try to focus fire on this cultist right here, guys. And then I take my hit. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 20? Even fighting through your enfeeblement, you manage to connect. Yes, nice. so that would be... Uh, nine points of damage. Freaking okay. enfeebled. Yeah, that's minus two to your damage roll. Uh huh. And so then that's you, my turn. Yep, you pierce it, and it's it's looking rough, guys. Oh, nice. It's not down though. All right. Speaking of, this is their turn. So this one, um, huh. I think. Oh, actually, I did the harm wrong last time because it's three actions. He and he only did a two action version. It shouldn't have been the AOE thing. That's okay. This guy is going to. Jeez, uh... I guess he's going to. He read his hand starts glowing again, Nulara, and. Uh... It, it, his hand glows with dark energy, much like this one before you, and he reaches out to cast this chill touch spell on you. But it is a manipulated action, which does trigger your opportunity to attack that he doesn't know you have. So if you want to, again, in a flashback yes, scenario, please. try to interrupt this, go ahead. Oh, how dare you. Throw back to get 27. That, that hits. Yes. Okay. Kill it. Uh, for 12 points of piercing damage. So his, like, negative necrotic energies in his hand reaches out for you, and in one motion you, like, dodge it and bring the trident, like, up and, like, sever yeah, the hand off. It, like, yeah, falls through the air, and as he's screaming in pain, a second blow just, like, silences him, and he drops oh. dead. Nice. And then I'm gonna, I know, just for flavor, I'm gonna try and put my weight on the door a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> like you're like, uh, uh, uh. like I'm gonna make him work for that. But yep. what you don't remember is the door opens the other way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then I like, fall. It's gonna be like, hello. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, if you had if you had actually used a physical action to hold it closed, then I think that would have, that would actually like, more than just flavor. It would probably be a good thing oh, to do. Oh, right? okay. You know what I mean? Next like, time. I think yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, I think that's actually viable. Um, there's no, I don't think there's a rule that says what happens if one holds the door closed, but maybe there is. Uh, um, I'll look that up. So You'll know, talk about from it the next the, game. From the other side of the door, you hear oh, it no. basically yelling like some words that. Uh, oh, did that feel? I don't that? understand. <laughs> Yeah, he has. It says linguistic. He has to be able to understand. So let me see. Uh, oh, okay. So he shouts this in common. Oh. He does speak common. They speak common. They just not their favorite. So in common, it just says like, uh, "Drop your weapon," and he's gonna use. Make command. me. Well. Oh shit. He does. He is <laughs> by using command. So make, make that will save. 
Everyone else donated 1,146 points. Oh, thank you. The hero point. Hero point. Oh, okay. Let's use the hero point. Come on. Yo. That's a success. So you managed Make to resist me. the effects of the spell being forced onto you. Um, I'm out of hero points. Thank you, Mokta! <laughs> yep, and that's that's all you hear. You hear him basically telling you to do that, and then um, that's that's his turn. Mukta. He's behind the door. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to... Um... I don't think we did the persistent damage on you last turn, but I'll remember it for this turn. <laughs> uh, no, we didn't. That's fine. Oh, no. Uh, it was the same. Oh, no, we didn't. Uh, let's see. I'm going to... Stra... Uh, damn, that's two actions. Um... Uh, I'm just going to... I can't really hide here, can I? There are lots of bookshelves and high things to hide behind. There is. Like, every one of these bookshelves we've already said, you can't walk through them because it's a barrier, so that is ways to hide. But I want to, uh... S spend two... Nulara, are you going to try to hold the door? Or... I mean, it's what? up... To... <laughs> it's up to you guys. We can also just leave. Uh, I think we should kill him before he alerts anyone else. Okay, I'm... then... I'm... Yeah. I am agreeable? Yes. I think... I think we should, uh... Take care of him. Uh, I didn't see any extra, so I think you should open the door and let me charge in. After all three of you. You're <laughs> gonna charge. I'm gonna be right behind you, Hal. Right in front of me. That sounds like a plan. Okay. Just like a leader. See? Speaking like a leader. All right. All right. What I'm going to do? Stride over here and hold a quick draw for when uh, he is within he's within range of me. Mm -hmm. Or no, actually I'll just hold the bow shot for when yeah. she opens the door. I think because you can hold an action and your quick draw says, you know, anytime you attack you can draw the weapon. It's a kind of holding both, right? Yeah. Yeah. So either way you want to do it, it's cool with me. All or right. The ready, or just ready to do like a, a wild an attack. Like quick attack, right? Yeah, yeah. either way. Okay. Um, at the end of your turn, uh, you uh, feel sickened, and you're going to take 1d4 mental damage as you continue to be flayed. Uh, two points All of right. mental damage. All right. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Hal? Okay, I will uh, sustain the lights. And... Uh... I will move them a little bit mm -hmm. so we can see them. Uh, I'm going to put one right on Mukta. He loves that. <laughs> and uh, so sustain, I have two actions. I'm going to put away my loot. Oh my gosh. And I'm going yes. to I think I draw my sling. Yeah. It's just like, got like yes! a, a guitar wrap. So you just let it go. Guitar it, wrap. On the sling. Right? Let's yep. go, Hal. And you got your sling ready. Now, this sling is almost yep. as epic as Nular's trident. It's uh, also responsible for many of... Two for two. Kills. Two for two, yeah. Let's so go, maybe, Hal. This will be the new one. So you got the sling ready. Okay. Wait, what's going on? Why, why is he putting the loot away? He's a sniper. He's a sniper. <laughs> Believe in him. Clovis, it is your turn. <laughs> Um, the first thing I'm doing, I'm just going to hide behind the bookshelf. Okay. Go ahead and... And then, me um, a... You're like, you're, you're trying to actually stealth? Yes. Okay, give me a stealth check. Okay. Okay, and then, um... Did you recall knowledge? I want to see if this guy is undead. Okay, make a religion check for me. So recall knowledge 
religion. Uh, you're not entirely sure. You feel like there's a pretty good chance, but you're not 100% sure, but maybe they're not because they're kind of talking and they kind of have thoughts. But maybe, yeah, it's hard to get a read. You don't get any information then. Only two actions. Could I roll that again? Uh, can I do another religion check? You can. And this is, every time you, you try, the the, uh, the the bar goes higher to recall different knowledge. So you can make another one. It's just the DC is going to go up. So go ahead. Oh. I'm going the opposite way. And the, so the second right. one, you're like, I'm not sure. Dig, dig. No, 100% these are not undead. Undead would not be able to talk and walk and speak like these do. That doesn't make fun. Okay. Uh, Nular. Um, my first action, I'm going to open the door. Okay. You open the door and you see the cult is like back in the room, like in like almost like a hunched over battle ready stance. He left. Coward, I say. And then... I feel like this is gonna be an ambush. Um, I look behind me to all my friends and then I say, watch my back. And then I stride in. Yep. And so basically looking at everyone else's tokens and the way the lights are positioned with the door opening and stuff, like Nulara charges in the darkness that nobody else can see into. I'll just scream really loud as I throw down my trident at this guy. I don't like being told what to do. Yeah, and it, you're holding your attacks for when you can see it, but like you can't see it either. Uh, nope. 23? Uh, 23 will hit. Okay. Uh, Tumble in the be... darkness as Nulara fights against the thing in pitch. Ooh, that's not a great damage roll. No, not at all. Uh, seven points of okay. piercing damage. And then, um, so first action, open the door. Yeah, okay. that's my turn. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, top of the round, this guy gets his turn. Um, oh, wait, doesn't he go... Don't I go after him, or...? Oh, you went last. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna die. Um. Not a lot of great things for him to do. So he's going to. Uh, oh, here's the funny thing. He doesn't know that you're combat capable because you closed the door right before you murdered his friend. So <laughs> he's not aware of how like combat capable. So again, he begins casting a spell with his hands to reach out and touch you, triggering your opportunity attack because he's not aware mm -hmm. that you're this combat capable. So he's going to cast like, a spell. sweating a little bit. His hands begin uh. glowing. Third time, can we go three for three, Nulara, on like cutting them down before they touch you? I want to use the emoji. <laughs> that's a hit. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's better. Oof. Oof. Nice. And then 12 okay. points of piercing damage. So it hits him while he's about to cast a spell. Um, I got to look something up. I got to look up what the rules are for interrupting someone. Because I think he has to make a roll to not have a spell. Anyone know what the rule is off the top of your head for casting a spell and being like interrupted? For NPCs, it's an automatic failure. Oh, <laughs> that's that's awesome. <laughs> Let's see. I think it's it in the attack sense. of opportunity, it's right? What does your attack of opportunity say? Can you put it in chat? Attack of opportunity. Here. Oh, it says you disrupt that action. So disrupt says when action is disrupted, you use actions reactions. But the actions of fence don't occur. Okay, so because you hit the because you hit him, um, it's a manipulate action because that's why you was able to do it. So you actually hit and interrupt. So you don't kill him, but you stop and it like boom. Does it say it's only in a critical hit? Critical, yes. And this was not a critical. Oh, that's right. You did not crit this time. 
So the Perfect. other guy. So you have to create. If you crit, you can stop too? the spell from happening. Okay. The other ones you killed before the spell went off. This one, the spell does go oh, off. Oh. Okay. Okay. So he does reach out and does attempt to touch you. So I need you to make a fortitude saving throw. Fortitude. Oh, come on. Ugh. Oh, I'm one short. One short again. Oh. Um. So that's gonna be. Okay, then you're gonna need to make uh, another fortitude save. Oh wait, maybe maybe the save, no, maybe the damage always happens. So you take seven points of damage, you fail the save, and you go mm -hmm. from Enfeeble two to Enfeeble three. Okay. For, this Enfeeble's only gonna last for one round though. Okay. So you feel, again, ugh, you're weaker and weaker and you're drawn closer to being- I just keep rolling my shoulders and cracking my neck. Right. Okay, um, and then um, he has one more action. Uh, I think he, he screams and he reaches out with his other hand and he touches you and he's gonna use a one action harm spell to do a 1d8 damage touching you. Okay. I take it's none. Four, and then the amulet <laughs> flares and like absorbs all the negative energy again, protecting you for the second time tonight from the harm spell. Woo! That's his turn. So unfortunately, Mukta, you were waiting for a line of sight, but he's withdrawn yeah, from the fact that it did not happen. That's fine. I'm going to um, yell out, Hal, the lights, I can't see anything, and I'm going to delay my turn until after Hal's. Ooh, I like it. All right, Hal. Okay, I'm going to sustain the lights and move them up to 120 feet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move them here and here, and it goes in here like this, and mm -hmm. some more. Well, and uh, I'll move them all down. Well, I guess I should stride first. I will move to this place right here mm -hmm. and move all the lights. Yep. And. That's two, that's, I, so I, you see me take my sling and spin it over my head and fling yes. it down the hallway. Yeah. All right, make that attack roll. Natural 20, natural 20. Uh, attack, uh, inspire courage, okay, let's go. <laughs> hey, it's okay. a 20! Okay. <laughs> it's not a natural 20, but it is a 20, <laughs> and that is uh, exactly what you need to hit in this instance. Nice. Okay, I'm uh, thinking maybe perhaps I need to... No, I think that's okay. Three points of damage. All right. Nice. Like, like the rock like hits him in the head and he reaches up and like rubs his head and he's like, Are you serious right now? And like is looking like Pat Junior to see what's in the hallway. Who throws a rock, All right. honestly? <laughs> Just wait. I've Who seen, throws a shoe, man? I've honestly, seen, I've seen a, I've seen that rock be kill enemies far stronger than you. <laughs> I cough. Yep. And Mukta, it is your turn because you waited until after how got the lights in there. All right, I'm going to stride. I'm going to drop my short bow. Okay. And so I can move. Uh, the full 30 feet, I'm assuming? Yep. Uh, well, I'm going to move, well, five feet here first, just so I can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, so that's then 20, 25, 30. St step. Okay. For my second action. And third action, quick draw with the rapier and stab him through the heart. Yes, flat-footed. He is flat-footed with this flanking. Nice. That is a hit. Yes. Nice. Nice. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Uh, 16, nice. Mukta, how would you like Shit. to do this? Yes! So, yes. I yell, how lights! And I see him rush forward heroically, like a hero would, like a mayor would. Rush, put his lights into the room, 
and take out his sling like David fighting against Goliath. And inspired yeah. by his courageous acts, I drop my short throw and rush on all fours past Nulara, past this cultist, draw my rapier, and in one swift motion, pierce it straight through his brain. Yes. Very, very nice. And that, with that thing, the creature drops Freak dead, off. and they will never get to see how your flesh tastes with violet fungi. Oh, look that. Um, and so, yeah, so then um, the the sounds of combat draw to a close. Uh, this creature's this cultists have been destroyed, slain by uh, Mukta and Ulara. And how? And then immediately, Mukta, your triumph is tempered a bit by the fact that you look down and see bits of your skin just being flayed away, and you take more mental damage. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right. So you can make some saves to, to get rid of it, if you like. You get three uh, attempts. Uh, Alright, what is it? Fortitude? Fortitude, yeah. You gotta get it a little deeper. Maybe bend over a little bit. Huh. Huh. You're not helping! No, that's how <laughs> I did it! No, don't, don't rub my back, it doesn't help. Oh, okay. I thought I can like. <laughs> yeah. No, the pain continues to rack you. Uh, Mukta, or sorry, Hal and Close can kind of come in and join, but like everything that's happening to Mukta is like mental, so it's like on Mukta to not slowly be flayed <sighs> in his mind. Four more points of damage. Yep. All right. Now there are Maybe three rolls. Grab your arrow no. and use. Remember, that. Clovis goes. Mukta, remember what I said. There is no try. Or don't do. <laughs> you can do it. You literally oh. ate one like five minutes ago. <laughs> don't talk to me right now. <laughs> I'll cast do two it. guidance on him. <laughs> well. Guidance is that right gross, bro? I'll take Use... it the second I'll take the second one with guidance. Use the butt of uh, the no, arrow. I I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to use guidance because I used it within the hour. Ah, oh, that is right. That's true. Well, good luck, friend. <laughs> you're just gonna watch this, McDonald. Oh, you're good. You're gonna watch this. So you shake <gasps> the effects. It leaves oh. your mind. You're no longer being flayed. Oh. Told you you uh, could do it. You all get eighty experience points for that. What are we at? Six fifty. That is what I have. Six fifty. And for just just a moment, you have um, you, you you get to see this room. You like looking around. Uh, the room does dead end here, so there's not like another door that like leads to anywhere else where more of these might be coming from. Luckily, um, but like long shelves with several chairs drawn up to them ring this room on all sides. Uh, rancid stains of old blood and decay cake the shelves and floor in here. Um, it's just like a bunch of like desk space with a bunch of chairs that look like they've been neglected for quite some time. I'm just gonna take a seat real quick. Yeah. Seems like a good idea. Mukta oh, joins. <laughs> maybe you close the door so nobody can come in. Mushi is like did Mushi make it in? Yep, uh, Mushi is writing on. He's on my shoulder. Got it. So yeah, so you Clovis close the door. Nalara. Yeah, Clovis looked at Nalara and said, "Maybe we should have uh, listened to our leader, as uh, Mukta said. If he uh, if he's going to be mayor, and he is a brains, he did say to leave. I he did not offered. Listen. I offered to leave. I was ready to leave." And the door just opened. So that is okay. Uh, but I think we should uh, go back uh, once we are ready and, and capable. Maybe I heal you each of you up. Um, I really can't see how bad you are because you were throwing up a lot and you've got puke all over your stuff. I can't, I uh, I can't check the wounds. Um, but Mukta, you don't look too good, my friend. I'm going to cast a Suze on you if that is okay. 
Please, my friend. <clears throat> oh, what? Nice. Fourteen. Nice. Does that work? That definitely works. So we're going back yeah, after we take a breath, right? Yes, I think that's, uh, well, I really don't want to be carrying all these books around. It makes, you know, fighting a little bit difficult. I will cast Suze on Nulara. Uh, almost as good, 13. Okay, that's doing? it. Uh, I, can, uh, I can cast Till on all of us. Uh, how are you guys doing? Um, I'm good. I'm back to full. Okay. I'm pretty okay. much almost. At, I'm almost yeah, at full. No, no need to stretch. use your spell. I feel. Uh, I feel terrific. Uh, except for this puking makes me want to throw up. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was more of a dry heave, really. <laughs> There's a little bit of fur on your puke over there. Let's not talk about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so the camera kind of like drifts up through the. Uh drifts up through the, like, middle of the, the end of the ceiling, right, away from you guys, kind of up, and we see as the camera drifts up, it goes up to, like, the next level above you where it kind of goes through some dank, dark, narrow hallways, and we can kind of see just for an instant that um, there's some creature, some small fly-like creature, like, going along the walls of the dungeon with his tongue out, just licking the wall as it, like, buzzes along like muttering and it's like something angry under its breath and the camera just like doesn't follow it just pushes right past it in just a glimpse of a moment before it kind of goes through uh, under a doorway and you see another circular room with a beam of blue energy going from ceiling to floor crackling and then the camera like pans up and it follows the blue light up pushes back through more floors and it comes up, and we see as it comes up now through the floor, a familiar blood spot just bubbling, an infinitely, impossibly deep puddle of blood at the base of the Gauntlet Ruin. As the camera floats up into the top of the lighthouse, the blue pulsing energy at the top of the lighthouse growing brighter by the moment as we end tonight's session. She's back. <laughs> Go. Let's go. <laughs> He's back. So, we survived. Yeah, we got we got some more um, donations. So we are at five thousand three hundred ninety six out of our ten thousand. So we're already at over half our goal to get the oh, one shot. Thank That's you. Awesome. Oh. Yeah. Thank you guys. That's gonna yeah, it's gonna do it for us this week on the Abomination Vaults. Thanks for hanging in through our slightly technical difficulties as we sorted them out. Um, hopefully, it didn't detract from your experience too much. Uh, big thanks to Nina, Richard, Mike, and Rick for playing with me. It's always a blast playing with you guys. I can't wait for Wednesdays. It's my favorite day of the week. Thank you, sincerely, for playing with Thank me. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve, for running. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks Steve. Steve. Thanks to the viewers thanks live on everyone. Twitch. everyone. Yeah, thanks, you guys, everyone watching. Thank you. Um, thanks to Richard for dumping tons of uh, gift donations <laughs> on our viewers. Like, everyone that tuned in tonight, like, enjoy your subscription. It's awesome. Thank you for that. Um, they were definitely they were definitely not bribes. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Give your hero current points to Mukta. That's that's the the rule. Uh, check out my DM prep video series. Episode four will be airing this Sunday. Um, I've adjusted the schedule so I didn't stream last Sunday like I was going to. I'm gonna start doing my GM prep on an every two week schedule to allow me better time to prepare and to make sure that the content is up to the quality that I want instead of rushing it. Um, this week, we're taking a look at level three of the dungeon, which happens to be the library which we have been exploring for the last few weeks. Um, it will help some of you aspiring DMs unravel the mysteries of the Cult of the Canker and whatever strangeness this level might hold. For this mm -hmm. game, for this playthrough, we'll be back next Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific as our group continues to see just how many more goddamn more of these cultists can there possibly be within the abomination vaults until then stay safe and stay healthy bye everyone good night good night all your fathers out there have a have a happy father's, happy father's day. day oh yeah happy father's, father's day. day this weekend that's right
So happy Father's Day, Dad. Oh. <laughs> Thank okay. you. All right. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.